That's done. This is done. Also, with the uh, nearly historical railroad channel. So, um, there's this outside right now. Okay, brr. Um, yeah, so, not gonna be messing with the uh, hydro cap. At least not in any large quantities, anyways. Um, so, however, like three days ago, it was like 75 degrees outside, and I did mess with hydrocal, and I did more on the prop, promise, the prop, the palisades, <laughs> promise, the promenade, the palisades. So, I will show you an update on that. And um, also, in the last video, I, I mentioned that the poor people of Romley were displaced, and they, they didn't have a town really. Ah. Okay, where are the buildings? This is it, this has gotta be it. Where's the buildings? Where's, where's the town? I got home and I started feeling bad about that. So I worked on some buildings and I just wanted to get like some basic shapes done so I can figure out where their foundations kind of need to be. So I think that's what I'm going to work on at this moment. Really? Oh, come on. I Traveling for like a month. Ah. Where is everything? All right, so uh, here's some buildings, or at least uh, starts of them uh, for Romley. And uh, so you've kind of seen this one. Um, I've already kind of got siding and stuff on that. Um, not the whole thing yet. And uh, so here's one that I've started building. This I think is probably a little house and this is one right next to it. Um, and this one was kind of cool because I believe it was, I believe this part was the post office and this was like a pool hall. Um, so I, I brought these out, they're not done, but I, I brought them out so that we can stick it on the layout and we know exactly where they'll fit and exactly how big they are. And we can kind of build like a little foundation for it so we can get the placement in place. Placement in place, that made sense. Um, so then we can, um, I don't know, kind of figure out what the scenery will look like around there. I've got one more to build. Um, and I'll take them back later and, you know, finish them up. Okay, this is the Romley area. This is our stand-in depot. It's close to the right shape, not quite the right size. But anyways, <clears throat> these other buildings are just kind of stand-in buildings we stuck here. One of these log cabins is actually gonna get combined with another, and that will be one of the buildings. But the buildings that is brought, we're going to stick them in here and see how they fit and where we want them. Uh, just never mind the uh, container train, you know, behind Romley. <laughs> you know, times change. But anyways, that's that. Okay, well, sorry about the mess back there, but it is what it is. So I uh, have to look at my picture to figure out which buildings go where. I think I know. I was like really confused for a while because this depot was sitting here and I'm like, okay, the one building goes here and then there's another bigger building here, but this is like a really tiny spot. Then I realized this depot is not <laughs> sitting where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be over there. This makes much more sense. Um, all right, now, do, 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 do. look at that, cool. Almost fits my drawing exactly, but a little bit different on the front because it didn't stick out as far, but whatever, it works. It goes there, it's got a little. All right. These ones, I don't know if there was windows on the other sides and I didn't feel like cutting them out and putting windows in. So I just put one on one side, one on the other side. I think that will work fine. 
This building is like a bigger, I don't know, it looks like a bunkhouse or something. Uh, that's when I got one wall cut out. I need to keep doing more. Like I said, that spot there is going to be made up of a log cabin. Because in the picture, it actually looks like it's a log cabin looking thing where all the other buildings have that siding on there. So anyways, I have this one and I have another one uh, that's like the same size that can make up that building. I need to combine the two. So come with me and let's go look for this other building. We're going to have to extract it. Nothing here. So underneath the layout, some pieces from the original narrow gauge layout that we haven't actually used. And right here is a piece with a cabin on it. And that cabin is the same width as the other one. This is a farce. So this section here was uh, from the original narrow gauge layout and it was actually Boris Pass. And I tried for years to try to get that section of the layout to fit in our room somewhere, someplace, somehow. I just never could make it work. So finally one day I tore it apart. And while we're underneath here looking around, here's another section of that layout with scenery. Some trees and a snow fence. And that will get used someday. All right, so we got that cabin. And we got this cabin. I'm going to, I don't know, stick them together in some way. I know the roof is a little different, but that's okay. You know, maybe they're replacing that part. All right. That's gonna go somewhere in here. Can you see that? That's what I'm thinking of. All right, more in a bit. So I think I've figured out where I want them. Just gonna trace a line around them. And we'll put some wood down where that is. This one's got a little lean-to that goes uh, right here, but um, I think I'm just gonna kinda add that later. Okay, use this glue, these sticks, to uh, put down like an outline around these where they're going to go, just like we did over uh, at the King City Coal Mine. Okay, so um, I'm actually kind of excited about this. Um, quite a few videos back, uh, I did a similar thing. Uh, you have to look at that video to see how I did it, but however I did it, it worked, uh, but it took a lot longer, and it ended up a little bit tight. Uh, this, I think I've come up with a little bit different method, and I'll explain to you a little bit later why we're actually doing this. I'll show you some examples. Um, actually, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so here we are in Como, and uh, this is how we got the layout. But you'll notice how this building is in here. We can just pull this out like that, and there's this little inset spot for it. This is like 
wood or plaster or something that goes up right up to the edge so it just fits in there nice and perfect. Right here's some wood. So the scenery comes up on top, on this top part, and the wall goes on this inside part. So you can put this wood in here, get the scenery right up to it, even on top of it a little bit, get the building in there, and it's gonna set in there like perfect every time. So this is brilliant. I did this over here with this building, um, but it's, I think, a little tight, and it almost needs to be trimmed a little bit. And that was a different method. I had to figure out how that was done. But now I have a better way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain my kind of my new method. I think my old method was to measure the building, measure all the pieces, label all these little pieces uh, where they went, go to the layout, stick them down, and uh, it was just, mm, it, was, it took a long time to do all that measuring and stuff like that, and then bring it over to the layout. So this way, now I just do it basically live. We'll do it right in place pretty much. So I'll just pick one. I can actually just look at my tracing in this case. I'm gonna mark that. Okay, I'm gonna get some glue on that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down on this outside edge. Now the glue, I can't see it on that side. The glue kind of squishes out on this side. I'm pushing it down. I'm gonna scrape the glue off this inside edge where the building is, because I don't. I don't want to get glue on the building. Uh, just kind of make sure it still fits. Looks good, looks good. Could be a tad long. Maybe it's okay. So, go ahead and measure this one and I'm just gonna overshoot it. Doesn't really matter if it over, is overshot too far. I'm gonna overshoot it past here. Cut this one, oh, I lost my cutting board. Okay, I'm gonna get some glue on this one. And I'm going kind of quick. So I don't want the glue to set up on me too much because what I've found is I can make adjustments. So stick that down, squish it, get the glue to squish out. Don't care about the outside, but the inside, gonna clean that out. Also, you want the building to fit in there nice so you don't want glue in there. So I'm gonna stick the building here. It's not square. I'm gonna push it up to the front edge of that building. Perfect. Let me push it down one more time and there and there. Still no glue on the inside. Safe to set the building in there. I'm gonna measure this one. Make this one kind of fall on the inside out here, over here. I'm gonna cut that. Okay, that's cut. Now, port in here. I'm going to glue this. I do not want glue on my building. So, remove the building carefully. Drop this in here. Get it where it needs to be, hopefully. Squish it down. Glue comes out. Clean that inside part. Don't want the glue on the building. Now it's still movable. Stick the building back in. Whoop. Stick the building back in. And it's big. So we're gonna push this in. You can't see it on that side. Sorry about that. Push that in so it's against it. I don't want it. I don't want it super tight, uh, but against it, you know, a little bit snug is okay. And also I could see that maybe this board could swell a little if it gets wet when you do senior, but you can come back in here and trim it. That fits in there nice. All right, let's cut this last one. So we're just gonna stick it there, measure it. So again, the scenery, whoop, the scenery is gonna come up to here. And you can just use a uh, sculpt mold or whatever you want to use and bring it right up to that. Okay, got glue on it. Lift the building straight up. Don't move anything. Get that down. Squish it into place. Clean the glue out. Get that crack seal up. All right. Get that all cleaned out. Okay, check the building again. Fits good, a little bit of a gap. Ended up with a little bit big gap there. I think we'll be okay. There we go, it's pretty good. 
All right, there you go. That's where that building's gonna go. You can run the scenery right up to this and the building will always fit right in there. Nice and perfect little fit. I like this. So also, um, on, to, on these bigger ones, I did like one, two, three sides. I'm trying to see if you can see that. One, two, three sides first. And the same method, put the building in, take it out, put it in, take it out, measure of glue, stick. Um, so like three sides. And then I let that set up for a while. So I didn't mess it up doing the other sides, doing this front side or whatever. The back ones were already kind of dry and, and set pretty good. But I also like triple check the fitness of it. The fitness it needs to lose some weight. <laughs> okay, so, um, I was just talking to my dad for a second and uh, I want to point this out. Uh, I'm building these buildings with the idea that they're going in here. So you can see here, I have this little edge. It has no siding on here at all. And that is, happens to be, right? The exact thickness of that. So that will sit in there just right. And I'm, I'm doing the buildings with that in mind. Okay, uh, the log cabins are a little tight up front, uh, but it's because of the doorstep. I'm actually gonna take these back home and put a stick of this underneath them and raise the whole thing up a little bit. Uh, so this will actually be sitting inside there on top of this. Uh, so that doorstep should fit a little better then. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you this building. Um, because here's the picture that I uh, kind of designed this building off of. Of course, the building is not done. But you get the idea of what's happening here. This actually is nearly historical. I'm actually trying to make this like an actual place. The windows and stuff aren't quite right, but I realized that after I kind of cut out the building, technically it probably should have been a little wider, but um, I didn't know how much space I had here on the layout, so I just left it. But it's really close, I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, meanwhile, my dad is working on Something? Not really even sure. Hold on. Ah, he's actually doing some ballasting. Yeah, well, that actually looks job. pretty. <laughs> yes, I think uh, ballasting is uh, everyone's favorite thing, next to you know eating old dried turnips or something like that. First of all, we have spray on very lightly a thin layer of alcohol water mixture to get it wet and also so that it doesn't bubble up on you when you put the glue on there. And then after you do that, make sure I wipe the track off just to begin with. Definitely have to clean it again afterwards, but then we take our white glue mixture, a little eyedropper, Water and glue. Water and glue, and drop it on here. Of course, I need a bigger eyedropper. And try not to get the touch to ballast with the eyedropper. Drop it between the ties. Very labor intensive, it takes time. So, so the the reason we're reballasting this area is because this is one of the areas where we made a cut along this way to move the layout. That was one section, this was another section, and uh, we replaced little pieces of track, uh, but it was never really good. So quite a while ago, we replaced like this whole section of track, and I think even some wood underneath here somewhere, um, and we just never got around to ballasting it. Well, because no one likes to ballast. So now he's doing that, and it, this looks a lot better. It's cool, I didn't realize how not good it looked, I guess. <laughs> so, all right. All right, so uh, Romley is uh, getting some progress done. That's pretty cool. Um, I almost forgot to show you. I, I gotta show you the Palisades area. So let's go do that right now. Okay, so here's our split face rock area. Um, I actually redid the bottom of this split on there because it got a little thick on me, so I made it a little thinner so it matches better. Um, but also, what we 
got done here is we got a little bit more done I guess on the stone wall here and um, a little bit more done in this area there and along the front and I also have a lot of I'm gonna mess with brightness sorry guys uh, a lot of the uh, stone wall is here um, and a lot of this in the background here in the back is all rock mold now. Um, I don't know how far back in there I'm going to go, but it's in there pretty far now. So that's kind of all done up now. All lift to the top. That's the wall there. I just have paper on there to protect it. And almost all the way out to the end I've done. Uh, pretty close. So, oh, and this end of the bridge. Brightness, sorry. Again, I got a lot of the wall right here done and then we'll have that bridge here try and show you the bridge here a little bit um but that will go in there like that and then down at this end it all fits so that's good so you know to me it's a lot we got a lot done and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you my mess down here on purpose you can see there's lots i don't want to touch it there's lots of bits from me carving and, and shaping and stuff all this down here uh, and out here I've intentionally not cleaned that up because sometimes I, I use that stuff I'll grab it like up here and I just kind of threw it in into some of the wet hydrocal and it made this really kind of rough and kind of rocky so when I add rocks it's already kind of rough and stuff so I like that that worked out really well and potentially I can take some of this and break it up even more because a lot of it is from a mold um, and it's chunky looking and it could look good for talus if I just paint it and I actually need a lot of talus especially under this wall so that's why I'm keeping my mess for now I sweep it off the top but I may use it later as we make a rock mold, I uh, sometimes make extra hydrocal and pour it into my mold to make these stone walls. So I'm building up a stack of them. Um, and those I'm letting dry up pretty much all the way and then taking them out of the mold. And then I kind of cut them to fit into places like that. And I'm also collecting them. Um, so if you imagine with me, this is the uh, coal chute. The narrow gauge comes off here onto a coal trussle standard or dual gauges down here. So I decided to go and put this brick wall kind of back behind there also. So I'm collecting more of those pieces uh, for that also. Okay, back over at Romney, uh, the little log cabin building. Glued a strip of wood across there and there and on the ends, made it all one building. So now it's all one piece. So I'm just saying, you know what? They added on one day. They added that on. And then it was like, that ain't enough. So they added that on. So, you know, that's the story. And that all fits in there. I went ahead and painted that edge also. So just in case you see it. But now that fits in there. Perfect. Very good. And while I was painting stuff, I painted these two strips of wood. Uh, let me show you what they're for. So I showed you the bridge over at the Palisades. So basically this is just one solid piece of wood that is actually just the road base that goes all the way through here. So it's nice and strong. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just literally probably just glue these sides onto there. I'll build some kind of center support. Be one there and one there. Let me show you this now. So what I'm doing with these is I'm going to run this like that, like that. This is actually just a piece of balsa wood that I painted, uh, but it makes a top edge on there. So that will give it a little bit more a little bit more definition. And also, what I'm going to attempt, I only have two of these pieces. 
is the second edge. That I'm just gonna put on this back side. I don't wanna get it close because I don't wanna get white on there. But I'm just gonna put it on this back edge and uh, you probably won't see that there's not like actual girder stuff on the other side, but you'll see the top edge of this and that will match this top edge on this side. So that's my little trick. It's a cheap bridge, that's what it is. Come and take one more look at the old ballast job here. It will probably dry and look a little bit different color, but that looks so much better now. So my dad has also been working on putting toggle switches into fascia board, getting them mounted. So that's another thing he's been doing tonight. So anyways, you know what? I think that's it. That's it for this video. That's it for this evening. So subscribe if you haven't. If you enjoy the videos, please tell people about it and that type of stuff. And all the usual, hit the like button because YouTube likes that. And uh, ring the bell so you get notifications when new videos come out. And we will see you next time. I predict maybe there'll be another nice day and I can finally finish up the rock molds over there in Palisades area. And then we can start painting that and it's gonna pop and like really come alive. So that's, that's pretty cool. All right. Thank you for watching as always. We will catch you later. That's it. Going back east. Call me when you get a town. Maybe I'll come back out.